Welcome to Fripp's World and we can see that you are entering the room and thank you very much for finding time to watch this live. We do realize that many of our friends will be watching this as a replay and you are equally welcome. There are a few benefits of being live and to tell you some of those, why don't you listen and find out how Paul our moderator is going to help you. Hello everyone. Throughout the call we'll be having some polls, yes or no questions that you can vote on. At the right hand side of your screen you'll see a window that says chat and polls. You'll know you're in the chat room because at the top of the screen it will say welcome to Fripp's World where ordinary speakers become superstars. The poll will pop up automatically over the chat window. Once you have voted, click vote and then click the tab to go back to the chat window. The chat window will also be where you, where you ask your questions. Just um, make them short and specific and we'll answer them live on the call. And today what we would also like to do, if you want to have advice about a specific presentation, you can write this in the chat. And what I would encourage you to do is put the type of presentation and your question or what you'd like help with. So it might be senior management, I'm terrified, or uh, a keynote speech, opening, or client update, something new. That would be new. And the first poll that we would like because although I am organized with what I can say and what we would like to tell you, we are very flexible. The first poll question is, have you heard Fripp speak before? If you've heard me speak before, then my standard pieces of advice will be introduced, however we will spend less time on them because I do have some new ideas for you. If you've, if you've heard me multiple times, that'll also be great information if you've never heard me. So the first question that Paul is going to bring up is, have you heard Fripp before? And you will click on the Polls tab, I'm doing that myself, and all you have to do is say yes, no, and vote. This is just a matter of interest. It is an anonymous poll. We just tell percentage-wise how many people are yes and no. And while you're doing that, for those of you who might be new, we are introducing these virtual events to our friends, our various communities, and prospects. It's that simple. And I don't know if you've been in some of these type of meetings before. They are live, just like a live television show. And good, 89% of our population has heard me speak before, which means we have to have new content. So let's start with yesterday was an exhilarating day because I walked in to one of my corporate clients boardrooms. This is a biotech company and I work with executives and marketing managers all the time. And for the first time in my, in my five years of working with them, my new client walked in and said, I will not be using a PowerPoint to which you can imagine and if you've seen me before I did a little dance because this is an organization full of brilliant people who have horrible PowerPoints because their senior management wants everything on one slide. The next comment he made was I only have 10 minutes and perhaps you've heard me say this before because I told him that is exhilarating because you can have more impact with a well-crafted, well-delivered 10 minutes than you can if you had four hours. And we got the whiteboard and I said, what are you going to be discussing? And he said, well, I'm starting with this this quick video 
which is about a new app that we have developed for our our patients to use to get more information on health and treatment and support groups and he showed it to me and there was a tagline which obviously I can't tell you but it was a wonderful tagline and I said great you're going to show the video and your first line is going to be the tagline of this video promoting the app and I said what we are now going to do is build three avatars three different ages of women who are getting your treatment and using your app and we had different age levels the first one was 30 the second one was 48 and the next one was 68 and these are all real live patients and people who have been part of their different uh, groups that they poll and find out what's valuable for their patients and then what we did we told the story of three people I, I told him questions to ask if they if they if he didn't know many of them he would had relationships with and what part of the app was most valuable and why and the the transitional line between one story and the next was the tagline again and he said I've never designed a presentation like this and I said well this is the perfect way to do it even if you're using a PowerPoint you do need to whiteboard or flip chart or yellow pad what is going to go in and on a on a whiteboard or he had the entire wall it's easy to go out wide to add more detail and then at the end I said how large is your team he said five people and this was his close he said on behalf of the five dedicated team who created this app we would like to take credit however credit is due to the ten person patient board who guided us and the first younger woman we talked about blogged about health issues and we talked about she had said herself this was her mission so his walk away line was then we challenge you to join us in I'll say Melanie's mission and spread this word to your doctors who can in fact spread the word to their patients so what do we learn for you one as you might have heard me say before the creative process is messy and for those of you and I know some of the people who've signed up are in the corporate world and they do use PowerPoints as you know I use PowerPoints and that is a very important part of business presentations however don't use it as a crutch use it what it was designed to be a visual aid design your presentation then ask yourself where must I have a slide where must I visually represent what I'm saying and of course what we did in yesterday's presentation is after we talked about each woman we talked about her challenge could be more information it could be uh, the young mother said my <laughs> I understand I'm getting emotional telling her story which is good she said my pair my my family are very supportive however they have no idea what I'm going through and I don't want them to she uses the app to communicate with other people going through her situation and then I said 
what you're just going to do, he carried his mobile device, just click on it and demonstrate it for everyone to see. That was a great visual aid. It was live and in the moment. So the creative process is messy. Even if you're using PowerPoint, go to the whiteboard first. And if you have any questions or comments or want advice about one upcoming presentation in the next uh, couple of weeks, put that in the chat and Paul will tell me and, and read them to me. So while you're doing that, and Paul will tell me at the appropriate time, let's look at five FRIP techniques that are going to make you a better speaker. Always, how do you start? If there is one part of your presentation, I want you to script, I want you to know it cold, your spouse could elbow you in the middle of the night and you could do it, would be your opening. That is when we're going to be most nervous. It is also going to be the time that the audience might be restless and we want to almost reach out and grab them. And they think, wow, oh, this is a good approach, or this is going to be better than I expected, or wow, what an opening. And there are multiple ways that you do that, and based on what types of presentations you say you have coming up, I will add some specific advice. The second is you need to structure your presentation. And the first question I ask every single client, and I would challenge you to ask yourself, no matter how long your presentation, 10 minutes, one hour, if you had one sentence, what would it be? You, you're going to get your full fee or your full impact or however you rate the success of your presentation in one sentence. How can you summarize your whole message? And that relates to your central theme, your big idea, your premise, what you are selling. And then your structure reinforces how you do that, what, uh, what information the audience needs to come to your conclusion. And that is what you do first. This is what we were doing on the whiteboard. Then your next is you have to have good stories. And stories, depending on your situation, might be case histories or examples. And they don't have to be long. And make sure stories are about people. And if you've been in any of our trainings, you know an important part of stories is that you have to deliver the dialogue not report on the dialogue. Deliver, well, let's say reporting on the dialogue would be Paul and I had a rehearsal before we made this event live. And he asked me if I had any polling questions. Now, delivering the dialogue would be in our rehearsal, before we went live, Paul said, Patricia, do you have any polling questions? Can you see the example? Very different and much more powerful. So we have start, structure, stories that have characters and dialogue and obviously the point of the story. And then we have emotional connection. That is you focused language. It's, it might be asking a question. And when you ask a question, let's just say, have you ever walked into a room full of strangers and didn't know what to say? If you were going to do that, that's good because you're talking to you. Have you ever, even if there are 8,000 people in the audience, you still say, have you? What I would recommend you change is to say, rather than have you ever, how often have you? Because if your audience has only been in this experience once, whether they were successful or it was painful, why on earth would they want your advice? I didn't like it. I'm not doing it again. However, if this is a regular part of your life, then your solution is going to be more of a payoff. They're really going to pay attention. 
what a lot of speakers do is address the entire audience. All of you are probably, or somehow everyone in this room, and I'm not saying you can't do that occasionally. When it comes to the real advice and the real connection, you speak to one person and everybody in the audience hears he or she is talking to me. And the fifth is razor sharp specificity. And I have a couple of suggestions that you have not heard before. And, and that is a teaser to get you to stay on a little longer. So, Paul, are there any questions, comments, or specific groups that our listeners want advice on? Absolutely. There's quite a few questions. The first yeah. question comes from DH. How do you build excitement into your speech rehearsal so that one delivers the actual speech with exuberance? If you want to build excitement into the presentation, my best recommendation would be have a good night's sleep. Nobody will ever understand unless you've done it yourself how much energy it takes and how much focus and how exhausted you are after a presentation. So have a good night's sleep. Then remove as many frustrations and distractions from your life beforehand. I, I tell all my executives, don't get on conference calls, don't check your emails, have some quiet time to just focus on what you're going to do. Then do all your preparation beforehand. Get there early, run through your, your PowerPoint deck or whatever you have to do to prepare. Make friends with the stage is the expression they use in show business. It's just be there, walk the stage, or be in the boardroom. And then, when people come in, schmooze, talk to them. There are a couple of good reasons. One, you are warming up your mouth. You're getting energy in your body. This is very difficult. Don't let them put you at the head table or the front row, which is an important place, and have you sit down for 90 minutes when you've got to get up and be dynamic. It's not possible. You need to be able to be at the back. You need to move. You need to go to the restroom. You need to blah, 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 blah. whatever you do to relax the stress from your body. And so one, that's good. You're warming up when you talk to people. Secondly, you are building a connection long before you get on the stage. When I spoke at Million Dollar Roundtable, and my audience of 1,000 to 1,500 people, 90% of them could not speak English. And they were from other cultures who are wonderful, generous people, and I'm out schmoozing, even though... I didn't know what they're necessarily saying. And 50 people asked for my autograph and wanted their photo taken with me before I started. An American said, gosh, you've got to be good. And I said, they don't even know who I am. You understand that type of response says more about the audience than it does about you. However, this is the good news. Don't you think the people promoting think that's good? Wow, nobody else, even the, the bigger celebrities, signed 50 autographs before they started. Okay, next question. Next question is from Lisa. She would like to know how you would suggest opening a keynote. Opening a keynote. Well, I would probably... Start w with a story. A story would be good that then when you transition into the premise, the, the premise and the point of your story match. There is a philosophy. Do you give a point and tell a story or tell a story and make the point? If you tell the story first, the point of it that transitions into your speech is obvious. That is not the only way. It is a good way. You could also ask a, depending if you're there to teach them, uh, rather than entertain and have high-level ideas, it could be a rhetorical question. 
If I were to ask you, is 2014 the year you double your sales? Perhaps you'd say yes. Perhaps you'd say no. Most likely you would say, Patricia, I would love it to be. Can you tell me how? Well, good news, you're at the right place at the right time. And in the next 90 minutes, we will look at 16 specific ways you can get more business from the database you already have. Grab your pens, your pads, we're talking fast. All right, another question. The next question is from Ashley. She asks, do you continue to read the crowd and individuals based on their colors? I'm not quite sure if you what you mean by that because I don't think you mean the color of their skin I don't know if you mean auras or if you're talking about personality types so I don't exactly understand that point of the question however what I will say yes you absolutely must read the audience because you know if people are looking bored or if you need to change something or if they're dozing off or it could be if six people go to the restroom and you have 30 people in the room it's obvious it's time for an informal break you always you always read the audience now it's important to understand your structure because when you walk on stage you need to hold the overview in your mind of the presentation and that's true with or without a PowerPoint then what we do we have to build flexibility based on the audience's response next question Paul all right, the next one is from Sharon. She wants to know how you would open a presentation without a PowerPoint to a Chamber of Commerce. How about this? Congratulations on being wise enough to know the value of being a member of the San Francisco Chamber of Commerce. Just like you, for six or oh, just like you for many years I've been involved serving our community and there is no better way than developing strong relationships not only so we can do business also so we are in a position to refer each other because this is my first piece of advice write this down you will develop stronger relationships with other businesses in our community when you are more helpful than you are trying to sell your services. In my business as a professional speaker and consultant and sales trainer, at networking events here at the chambers I've met many individuals who were looking for resources that certainly I don't provide even if they're in the training world however I have been able to introduce them to the right person and when we have that philosophy of giving it is more of a long-term approach but we are absolutely guaranteed to be receiving even if the people we are helping can't do business with us they will feel almost obligated or not so much obligated they will want to refer you back to their friends now I don't know what your subject is but that sounds pretty good to me all right, Paul, another? From Anthony, he asks, um, for a presentation on overcoming fear, would you recommend breaking the original rule you suggested if you wanted to start by emulating nervousness, anxiety, and fear into the intro rather than coming across as strong initially and then building into what overcoming fear looks like? Perhaps I have just been in the speaking world for so long I have seen that I have seen that very creative technique done frequently the first person who made it famous was Alan Simberg 
and it's true the audience is very nervous and uncomfortable uh, one because they have empathy for the speaker and two because they think hey uh, I, how can I make my escape so what I m might do is try a different version of that and say how about have the introducer say please welcome to <coughs> the vivacious Paul Griffin and walk out and do a couple of minutes of content absolutely dynamic incredible and then walk off stage and then have the introducer say let's meet Paul's twin brother the very nervous Peter Griffin Oh, Griffin and then have have yourself walk in again and do the second version now admittedly the audience knows the setup and the best advice I can give is try it this way try it the nervous way try be introduced as the normal you and then go back to turn around or do some transition into and it could be come out and be dynamic and then say if you had met me 15 years ago now when as I'm looking at the audience it would be I would move to my right the audience's left so I think this is the same with you looking at me on the screen that is the left as you look at the audience your left is the past your right is the future so you can stay there and just go back and and, and take you back to 15 years then you walk for, back to your position and say what made the difference and then your five principles on how to be a powerful speaker or how to overcome nervousness and then that's the framework of your speech and with all our content what we have to do is test and see what's the best response Paul Part of the next question we have is from Steve. He says, is it okay to pitch someone with a PowerPoint with whom you want to support and host your public speaking event in their community? Is it okay to pitch with a PowerPoint? Well, one, I don't like the word pitch. You present. Because pitch, I'm going to be sold. Present might be I'm introducing some ideas that you might be interested in so it's it would be one find out if there is an interest and then absolutely fine to have a PowerPoint what I'm recommending is we all need to be able to present our information various ways because there are times that you're all set and your technology for whatever reason won't work you need to be able to do it without there are times that you're going to walk in to talk to people and they say oh we're sick of PowerPoint can you just talk to us so just be flexible next one Paul Lori wanted to know can you talk more about specifically what persuades people not just giving a good presentation what persuades people is to one be aware of what their challenges are making sure that you're you're speaking as an audience advocate for example there are many people who have taken my sales training or coaching and they used to be in the position of the person they are now selling to so it, it's great to say when I was sitting on your side of the desk we always want people to see us like them in some way then you use you focus language and you you almost paint the scenes of what their life will be like when 
they take the advice that you're getting they're getting from your presentation or if they use your product and service if you are in a sales relationship with them a lot of it is the wording of what you're saying Paul David Taylor asks, how do you price your speeches for clients of different economic levels or do you have a different pricing structure based on that? Well, I don't and I don't know that this is exactly the format for that question because it all depends. Price integrity comes into it. There are different models of doing business. So I, I, I don't think that this is a place without knowing more details that I can really give you a, a great answer. Sorry about that. Next we have Larry. How would you open a two-minute presentation? Getting straight to the point <laughs> and, and script it tightly and rehearse it. I love short presentations. If I may give a specific example it was a large organization that presented different speakers of which I was one using a certain technology and they had plenty of people who were on stage so we had an audience in this ballroom at the Fairmont Hotel and it was being streamed to multiple cities and there were 17 different cities and the people in front and you know people can't do two minutes they don't know so we are about an hour and a half behind now people were still tuned in they was but it was getting late and they said Frit we can't put you on and I said look why were you so thrilled to have me you were thrilled because I'm the only faculty member who's at any of these locations you have got to put me on I can say something in a very short period of time. So I walked up and said, let me think, because it never hadn't occurred to me to say this. You are interested in this program because of the potential of greater success. Tell me what you say you want. Show me one week of your life and I'll tell you if you'll get it. Activity begets results. So I don't know how long that was. It was about 20 seconds. I got a standing ovation and that had more impact because I said less words than everybody else. A two-minute presentation, well tight and script, scripted, is fabulous. And do you know what people usually do is, oh, I can't say anything in two minutes. Oh, how would you like to only say two minutes? They waste their time giving excuses or saying how hard it is. Oh, that's so easy. You go in and steal the show with a couple of well-crafted, well-rehearsed lines that you know so well you open your mouth and your words fall flawlessly from your lips. Now, Paul, do we have lots more? We have two more questions, okay. and we're about 34 minutes in. All right, what are those questions? Then we'll do another poll. From Julie, is there any secret that you use to calm nerves? Rehearsal is the work. Performance is the relaxation. Rehearse, 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 and then understand you will be nervous. There are circumstances. You never know with these, this, will the technology go wrong? It's always a little nerve wracking, whatever you do. It just needs to be controlled. And for the people who are genuinely nervous, there's, there's nervous apprehension, there's excitement apprehension. There's the, I've been successful for 35 years, but I've never spoken to nuclear engineers before. Would they like me? That normal nervous apprehension. And then there's absolutely terrified. I, I can't speak. I won't speak. I spent 35 years getting out of speaking. 
and when individuals like that talk to me, the first piece of advice is stop telling you you're a lousy speaker. Stop, stop telling yourself you're nervous because you are building up and making a lot bigger your challenge. What you need to do is start programming yourself. I am a great speaker who is learning the techniques to guarantee continual success. Start focus on what you want. Don't focus on what you don't want. And that's true with any discipline. All right, next one, Paul. And the last question is from Daphne Mallory. She wants to know what is an example of how to close a seminar or presentation to sell consulting or other professional services? Would you believe I was helping someone with that yesterday? Well, it isn't. You don't close it that way. You do it throughout the entire presentation. So what you do is with the introduction, part of your introduction, somebody else reads about your consulting, your successes, very much in demand as a consultant in this area. Uh, many of her clients are Fortune 100 companies or local business professionals. Then throughout your speech, you deliver your techniques to get what it is that you could help them do and you tell case histories from your clients it might be how you develop this expertise it could be how you've helped your clients so you know it's not just you and at the end of each chunk of content and if you think of yesterday's speech with the three women so think of that as three three chunks of content you would, at the end of telling the story and how would you advise that client, you would tell this audience what they have to do to get that same result. And then, in the end of your speech, when you do the review, so now you know how to be powerfully persuasive. You heard how Bernard went from a shy engineer to a corporate rock star. You heard how Jean took a modest sales uh, book of business and became the company superstar. You heard how Marge, who was asked to speak for her charity, became a professional speaker. The techniques are bullet, 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 bullet. And if you want to improve it, and this is what you would do. If you need help with it, you now have a new best friend who is a speech coach or whatever it is that you, you are selling. And then have some wonderful walk away line and challenge. I hope that's helpful. Well, I think the next polling question would be, is this information helpful? So if you set that up, is this information helpful? And what I'm going to do is take a sip of my freshly squeezed fruit and vegetable juice to keep my energy up after a very long and exciting day. I'm going to click on the polls and see how you're doing. So yes, has this been helpful? No, it hasn't been helpful. I hope you will be a hundred percent but you never know that's it when you open up to the the public well I'll tell you one thing I learned recently and this can certainly adapt to us I signed up to hear one night with Al Pacino Mirage Hotel in Las Vegas and I don't think Al is Okay, well, 94% of you said this information was helpful, and 6% said no. Now, I don't know if that was one person who really didn't, and I'm sorry if we didn't satisfy you, uh, or if you're sassing me. You never know. I have friends that try and do this. Uh, um, Al's presentation, although he's not the best speaker, was good in video clips, and then they made a mistake. They opened it up to the public asking questions.
and they had three microphones and obviously it was a packed auditorium a lot of people wanted to ask questions but people didn't know how to ask questions they waffle on and then they make a comment and it really isn't a question and remember what Paul says to you what are your short specific questions and what I would recommend we learn from other people's experiences as well as ours and I've done this at Lady in the Champs is if it's open have people write their questions and then someone can sift through and take the real questions the good questions and pose them that would have kept the flow of the evening a lot better now Paul did and, and everyone sees the question, Paul answers the questions, but I'm sure he has a magic way, if someone was being a real ass, that he could probably block them. But that's the job and the secret juice of a moderator. I, I don't want to look down and read the messages, because I want to make eye contact with you. You could do it. I would always recommend that you have a, a moderator. All right, so with that, this information, so for the 94% of you who found this was, was helpful, if I may, I would like to show you how you might get more information. And then I'm going to give you the new technique that you haven't heard before, and I've got my notes here to give you an example. So what we're going to do, we're, this is the magic of technology. What we are learning is powerful persuasive presentations. And as you know, all learning needs repetition and reinforcement. I'm honored that most of you, 89% of you, has heard me speak before, and at least you tuned in to see what else might Fripp have. You know a lot of the basic information. Hopefully, answering the questions of other people helps you we can't ever think we know it all and what we would like to introduce to you and I will show you live in just a moment is my FRIP virtual training you can have a free trial and actually we have now extended this to seven days I just haven't had a new slide made up and for any friends of FRIP if you wanted to to join Use the coupon code FRIP and you would save 20%, which I'm sure you would agree, based on the value, and I'm now going to show you that it would be a relatively small investment. So now what we're going to do is go back, hang on, and I stop sharing, Paul? Yes. Good, so now I'm going to share again, and we're going to go to, here is Fripp VT. So if you were to go to Fripp Virtual Training on Powerful Persuasive Presentations, this is what you're going to see. You can see, you can take a tour, see what courses are there, the pricing, your free trial, or you can join. What I suggest everybody do with any website that has training is go down to the bottom and click the system requirements to make sure your computer's up and running. If you, somebody said to me from China last night, oh, I tried to sign in, it took five minutes. Well, I guarantee it's not the website, it's their system requirements, it's their computer. So we're going to sign in. Now, as you know, I'm a member, so I'm just going to sign in. And this is what you have. FRIP Virtual Training is self-directed, highly interactive, learn at your own speed, all aspects of presentations. And you can f find the handouts in your vault, your report card of how you're doing, take your own notes, and get a certificate s perfect for training when you've been through. So what we're going to do is just give you a just show you what is available so let's just see what shall we pick how about 
stories. Everybody loves a good the story. The importance of a good story. Nobody can resist a good story well told. In this course, you will learn the techniques that will make your stories and examples memorable and repeatable. If you're ready, click the Start Training button. Well, what you can see, I have been through this course, and at the end of each course, as well as internally, we ask you questions. This means that you have to really learn the information. So what I'm going to do is I am going to go to one that I probably have finished just so you can have a choice. How about let's do, and I hope that this will be there. Welcome to okay. you. There we are. Welcome to You Have Choices, Options of Openings for Techniques. As you soon will come to discover, our subtitle is How to Open Your Presentation with impact. At the beginning of a speech, presentation, seminar, client meeting, report to senior management, sales presentation, or any manner of presentation you deliver, you need to arouse interest in the subject. After all, we stand in the rain to see a movie. Would you stand in the rain to listen to your presentation? You have 30 seconds to command the attention of your audience. Don't waste it. So as you can see, I have turned the sound off. But what we are doing is while I am talking to you, we are reinforcing in the side asset visually and with the talking points. So now let's see. I am coming back to my Google meeting. Do you see me, Paul? Yes, ma'am. All right, so there we are, and now I, I certainly, my call for action would be if you're not a Frip VT member, then go try it out, take a free trial, and certainly join and use Frip for my corporate friends and clients who are tuned in. Let's have a conversation, because obviously the more people you sign up, the lower per person investment. Now, this is what you have not heard me say before. The fifth, or really it's the, well, the fifth way that you're going to make your presentations more powerful, dynamic, memorable, persuasive, is to use specific language and wording. And one example, you know, the word thing. It's in, in conversation. These are conversations. It's not tight. It's not scripted. However, presentation you prepare, you select what are the best words. And the example I like to use is from the back of one of my coaching camps with Darren LaCroix. The next one is in December if anyone's interested. I kept having hearing people stand up and say, the one thing that will make you successful, the three things that will make you successful, the three things that will make you a better salesperson. And I came up with a list of 39 words without thinking that the speaker probably meant by this. So do you mean one technique, formula, strategy, idea, discipline, habit? Look at what do you really mean because it makes your language and your advice seem more powerful. Then this is what I am doing. I, when we're writing copy or writing about what is going to be in this seminar, what is going to be in this training program, and this is very much for the content in Frip VT, is come up with a list of verbs. This could be in your internal, for, for company emails, uh, company, anything you're writing about a conference, and also for the quality of your words when you speak. So simply make a list, and no doubt when this is finished, it will go in the file vault of Frip VT, for those of you who are ready for it. BT users. However, the idea is to not only take mine, it's to add to your own list. Alphabetically, because 
you know it's better to write copy you will learn how to colon so you start with a verb and verbs in your sentences create different pictures you del deliver the, the line differently and it adds more action it could be absorb, appreciate, arouse, aspire, achieve, acquire, attribute, adapt I'm looking at, uh, let's look at, pick a letter Paul G G, okay glean, grasp, grab, gauge and you keep adding to that, give me another one R. Ah. Recognize, realize, review, recommend. So that is your new idea. You've heard perhaps about making better words things. Then what I am now recommending you make a list of verbs and always remember the verb changes the sentence. I walked into the boss's office. I sauntered into the boss's office. I staggered into the boss's office. I raced into the boss's office. You understand that picture and how you deliver the word changes with how you got into the boss's office. Well, we have now kept you hopefully actively involved for 50 minutes. Are there any last questions? All comments, uh, Paul. I need to address before we say goodbye to our friends. There was a clarification for Ashley earlier. She said that she was talking about the personality colors, um, but other than that, no questions or comments. Okay, perfect. Well, thank you very much for your active participation. Thank you for signing in. Thank you if you're already a FRIP virtual training client. If not, may I encourage you to check it out and we'll have a conversation. This is your way to make more sales, become a better leader, get higher fees as a speaker, and arouse interest and commitment if you're a corporate leader. Good presentation skills are not only a nice skill to have, they are a matter of business life and death. It is not only the skills themselves, it is the results that you get when you're always confident you can be powerfully persuasive under pressure. Thank you very much.